today we're talking about how to get your first 1000 pr the first thing i want to talk about today is what average placement you need in the tournaments you play in order to achieve a thousand fortnite tracker pr in one season alone firstly we're taking a look at how you can get a thousand fortnite tracker pr just from fncs opens alone this season had three FNCS qualifiers, and to get a thousand PR just from those three opens tournaments, you needed an average placement of 217th place in opens. Let's switch the tournaments up and see what average placement you need in duo cash cups if you're gonna get a thousand PR from those all in one season. This season had eight duo cash cups, meaning you needed to place on average 300th place in order to get a thousand PR just from duo cash cups alone. Of course, most of us won't only play duo cash cups or only FNCS. We'll play both of them as well as solo cash cups, which means your average placement it can go up quite a bit and you can still easily get a thousand PR in one season. But here comes the interesting question. What do you need to do in order to achieve 1000 PR? How much do you need to practice and what should you practice? So let's hop right on into that. So starting off, I want to say that a lot of people under the 1000 PR threshold don't realize what the different game modes in Fortnite are actually for. So let me give you all a little breakdown of what Arena, Customs, Creative, and other game types will improve in your gameplay. Arena is for fighting practice. By only playing Arena, you can become a pretty solid fighter. But once you're at a relatively high level, you'll find yourself plateauing. Some of you watching this are probably 10,000 PR level fighters, but zero PR endgame players. Or the other way around. If that's the case, then you shouldn't be playing Arena to improve. The reason I say Arena is for fighting practice is because when you play Arena, you want to actively force fights against everyone you see. I've said this for like the last six months, but getting good at anything in Fortnite or life is all about reps. Getting good at fighting comes down to how many repetitions of fighting you have. Getting good at endgames comes down to how many reps of endgames you've played in your career. Getting good at 2v1s comes down to how many reps of 2v1s you've done. Needless to say, I'm pretty good at 2v1s. So this is the mentality you want to have when playing Arena. You need to get in as many fighting reps as possible in one game. Customs, or more specifically Zone Rule Customs, are for endgame practice only. And this is where a lot of people waste a lot of potential improvement. They W key and lose fights in Customs. If you don't get to first moving when playing a Zone Rule Custom, you've wasted like 20 minutes of your life for no improvement. It's important when you hop into Customs that you have the mentality that you're practicing endgame now, not fighting or anything else. Custom servers are much worse than tournament servers, and the lag you're playing on in Customs isn't comparable with how tournaments are run. Meaning fighting in Customs, especially in like 3rd zone, will give you very minimal improvement for the risk of time you're taking. Creative is mainly for improving consistency and speed when it comes to the mechanical aspect of the game. However, it's also for challenging yourself into fighting against high-level players. If you've been grinding Arena for a long time, you've probably reached a certain scale ceiling where it's hard to improve effectively by continuously just grinding Arena. Therefore, you need to start fighting amazing players in creative to keep up the pace of your improvement. Playing against great players in 1v1 build fights, realistics, and zone wars is one of the most effective ways to up your skill quick. The last thing you should do if you can't find anyone in creative that's, you know, at a high level and you feel as though you don't really learn anything from playing solo arena anymore is queuing into duo arena as a solo. To do this, all you have to do is hop into your game, go to select game mode, click on duo arena and then quickly press key on your keyboard to ready up. This way, you don't only challenge and improve your fighting abilities, but also your awareness. In 2v1s, you need a high level of awareness and obviously fighting skill. When you die in these games, I strongly recommend looking at what you did wrong and what you could have done differently in replays. The next way I want to talk about to easily get to 1000 PR is just a mentality shift. I bet a lot of players under 1000 PR are players who simply just give up if they have a few bad games in a tournament. What people don't understand is the fact that you can have 6 bad games and still do insanely well if you perform good in the last 4. Tournaments are only ever so often, so it's important if you want to do something in this game that you always take them seriously. And even if you have 5 or 6 bad games, still think that, hey, you know what, we can still perform, but we gotta get our shit together. Another mentality I see so so often is the mentality that you have low PR since you never play with good players. When I hear people say this, I instantly think that you never critique yourself for the mistakes you make in the tournament games you play. 
Even if your duo is some complete ass, you can still look at yourself and see what you could have done differently in the scenarios you find yourself in. Just straight out blaming your teammate gets you nowhere. Even if it was his fault, blaming him and getting a bad mentality in a tournament because of one mistake, firstly, won't make your teammate play any better, and secondly, you won't learn anything either because you put no blame at all on yourself. And overall, it's just an embarrassing mentality to have. Think about it this way. If you are playing a sport in real life, you hype your teammates up. If you guys lose, you lose together. And I think implementing this mentality into Fortnite competitive will get you a long way over 1000 PR. Moving on, I want to talk a tiny bit about mid-game fights and how taking them probably costs you to do way worse than you potentially can in tournaments. Mid-game fights, even if you win them, most of the time scuffs your game. And as a general ground rule, you should try to avoid them. A lot of new players coming into the competitive scene don't understand the importance of rotating early from your drop spot. Rotating with the zones in the first, second, third, and fourth and fifth zone can be very dangerous because you'll meet a lot of players. This can and will end up costing you a lot of shields. And that's why we want to have an effective looting path at our drop spot so we can get six minis, three bigs, and a med mist and be happy and on our way rotating early on. And on the topic of zones, I want to talk about another common mistake low-level PR players make, and that is going too aggressively in for kills in the first moving zone. One thing that is absolutely crucial for everyone to understand is that in the first moving zone, most players will have 200 HP. So if you can just hold on and survive the first moving, the second moving is five times easier to get kills in because way more players will be scuffed in the second moving compared to the first, and even more so in the third and fourth moving. The importance of not over-aggressing can't be emphasized enough. You gotta understand what you can and can't push for a kill in the first moving. You gotta realize that sometimes you just lost out on a kill opportunity, and that's fine. Just go and find a new one and try again. And talking about shields, another thing that is common with players with less than 1000 PR is that they don't understand the importance of having 200 health. Listen, you can be the best fighter in the world, but if you have 150 health and I have 200, my chances are already way, way higher that I will kill you compared to if you just shield up. In moving zones, if you have 170 health and three bigs, pop a big. Like so many players are greedy on shields and it ends up killing them. Please understand that having 200 HP is crucial if you want to limit your RNG to the biggest extent possible. Alrighty boys, that's a wrap for today's episode. If you watched all the way to the end and feel comfortable leaving your PR in the comment section below, I would appreciate it if you did so, as I'm super curious to see. Other than that, please go on and have an amazing day. My name is Marion TM. Stay safe and take care.